I wanted to just briefly give my thoughts on that. I believe it's a South Carolina situation with former police officer Deputy Fields, if I'm saying it correctly. And as we all know, I'm always one of the last people to step foot on the scenes and give my take on it. But let me go ahead and start off and give my take on it. This video shouldn't be too long. Now, we should all know that I'm going to call this right down the middle. I'm going to call out on all ends the way I always have done and the way it should be done. Now, when it came down to this officer's actions and what he's done, I mean, there's absolutely no justifying his actions or no justifying the way he conducted himself. I mean, it's just, it, it's just to look at the actions and from what I gathered, from the moment the video clip started playing, you know, you've seen him folding up her iPad or laptop or whatever it was and neatly placing it on the other desk. So this right here kind of lets me know that he had it made up in his mind on what he was going to do. Now, just looking at some of the video clips that I've seen about this man, this man was squatting over 940 pounds, somewhere around that range, in squats. Bench pressing somewhere around four to 600 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So we're talking about a pretty big dude. If I'm not mistaken, I believe his weight range is somewhere close to the 300 pound mark. So this is a big man. This is not no dude to be taken lightly. So when I seen him throwing or knowing this now, and now looking at the video evidence again and watching him place the Kindle or the iPad or whatever it was, leave me on the other desk, pretty much I knew, we knew or I can tell, okay, this is his objective. This little bitch did not listen to me and I'm going to muscle her into complying with me. So this is how it's going to go down. And the video clip clearly showed what is taking place. Now, am I negating what this girl has done, not paying attention or not following instructions? No. But as a school teacher, you know, unfortunately, these are, these are things that you deal with. And, you know, this can also lead back into the household, how many of these black females have no respect for authority. So they find themselves thinking they can do whatever they want to and get away with it. And this just needs to be a, a lesson to be learned that not everyone's going to handle you nicely. And let this go to a lot of you women that think that y'all just don't have to follow authority. You don't have no respect for men. Listen, let that be an example. Not every single man that you come across is going to be nice to you. Not every single man that you decide you want to get up in his face is going to take it easy on you because he's so big and strong and you a little tiny little female. There's plenty of men who ain't having that shit anymore. And the first chance you get in their face or you defy them in any kind of way, that's how they treat you. Now, once again, is this a matter of me justifying what that officer did? No. There's, no, there's, there's nothing that can justify or even rationalize what he's done. His own police department didn't back him up on this. Once the investigation was concluded, they didn't back him up on this. And there's just no way that you can. You really can't. But now, and I've said this about police officers in many different cases, a lot of them don't know how to regulate. There's a certain amount of force that you use depending on the situation. And I just say this much. As a, uh, as a man, if I were to find myself into a physical confrontation where I got to physically deal with somebody, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm going to let them take the first strike at me first because when they do that, it's a matter of self-defense. But there's also a, a, a level of force that you can actually use when it comes down to it being self-defense. And it's a matter of this. If somebody punches you in the face and you hit them right back, it's self-defense. If they punch you in the face and you beat them down relentlessly to the point where they're on the ground pleading for you to stop or to the point where they're incapacitated, they can't say anything, and you still continue to beat them down, in many different cases, it's no longer self-defense. If you get caught doing that, you're going to jail. I mean, you can have your whole life turned upside down behind that alone. If somebody punches you in the face and you take time to think about it, Let's give it 30 seconds to a minute. And then you decide, fuck that, I ain't having it. I'm going after this person. You pursue them now and punch them back. 
it's no longer self-defense in many cases. In many different states, it'll be considered an assault because you took time to think about it. I mean, that's how the laws work in many of these cases. So the point that I'm saying is there's a level of force that you have to consider using as a police officer. I mean, I'm just trying to put it in my perspective. If I'm a police officer, especially when it comes down to dealing with children, I'm going to try to go the easiest route possible. That's just me. No other way I can say this. If I can talk you into getting up and leaving, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm only going to use force if absolutely needed. And depending on the opponent of who I'm dealing with, is going to determine the amount of force that I'm going to use. What that officer did, and the reason why he was fired, was simple. And this is the reason why I say the guy is a jackass. Because he didn't follow protocol. I mean, when it comes down to any job that you do, there's a certain protocol that you have to follow. And if you decide that you're going to take matters into your own hands, you can lose your job. And we've seen time and time again that many police officers have found themselves making stupid-ass decisions who've ended up either going straight to jail or losing their fucking job. And I just, I'm wondering why would any cop within this day and age find himself making a reckless, stupid-ass decision in that fashion? That it just doesn't make any goddamn sense. I mean, if you're that dumb enough to go ahead and do some stupid shit, I mean, everyone's got cell phones with cameras on them. There's cameras damn near everywhere, and they're going to pretty soon be putting uh, shoulder cams on police officers. So I don't understand where necessarily this comes from. And we've seen time and time again that many police officers have been making stupid-ass decisions time and time again. So this is the reason why their outcome is now starting to change. Now, this is not to negate that girl's actions and the fact that she didn't follow the rules of that school or that teacher asked her to leave. No, and like, like I said, let this be a lesson. Not everybody's going to handle you in that fashion. And it's a problem with a lot of uh, young girls and teenagers. They think they can do whatever the hell they want to. Now, I just I don't know too much more about the situation other than what I've seen. But I believe her mother's either deceased or whatever the case is. Or I wouldn't be surprised if the parents weren't around or in the household. And this is why this young girl decided she's going to do what she wants to. She's not going to follow instructions when the teacher tells her to leave. And this is another reason why this whole thing went out of proportion the way it did. Now, would I sit here for one second and try to now make Deputy uh, Officer, well, former police officer, Deputy Fields, if I'm saying it right, a racist? I wouldn't go that far. Uh, his actions, were they fucked up? Yes. Can we conclude that he is a racist behind it? No. What you might be able to conclude is that, well, one, he didn't follow protocol. Number two, does he have a history of doing this? But I just wouldn't use that, so, that situation alone and solely say he's a racist based off of that. I wouldn't go for that. Whether he is or he isn't, I don't know. And nor am I trying to defend him. So I want to make it perfectly clear on where I stand with this. But now, here's what I find strange about this whole damn situation because the sheriff had done his investigation and I believe he did an excellent job with it, a fair job at it and he said listen I want to know did this officer follow our protocols and our procedures when it comes down to physically handling somebody and when he, he uh, stated I need to look at just a little bit more information to conclude my, my investigation and I'll have my answer in 24 hours on whether this guy is going to remain on the police force or whether he's going to be fired. And surely enough, he felt the need to fire him. And the reason why was because he didn't follow protocol. That simple. So if black people are going to argue this position, going in there talking about racism and this is how racist. Listen, man, you're going to lose that. I mean, you're going to make yourselves look stupid once again. Don't do that. It's real simple, and it's, it's clearly seen. He didn't follow protocol. You start going to your civil rights leaders and the rest of these foolish-ass people who, who, who claim they're backing you up, you're going to make yourselves look stupid once again. It's pretty fucking simple. Officer Deputy Fields didn't follow protocol. That's it. There's nothing else you need to run with. Now they felt fit to fire his ass because he simply didn't follow protocol. So now with that being out of the way, here's the important question, and this is what I want other people to start paying attention to. And this is what the sheriff said. First of all, it really shouldn't be 
for police officers to step in and deal with this. Police officers should not have to step in and deal with disruptive students in a classroom. That shouldn't happen. So the first question I got to ask, and now from what it looked like, the teacher of that classroom was a black man. So the first question I got to ask is, who authorized this decision? To have a police officer step in? I mean, from the times when I was in high school, there was counselors that dealt with that. The only time the cops were being called was when it was to an extreme. So now we have a black man that was in, who was running the classroom. Now, did he authorize this? And if he didn't authorize this, then who's above him? Who's running this school? And are they the ones that have authorized this decision to have police officers come remove disruptive students? Because if you Negroes are going to run around and say, well, you know, it's a matter of this is racism and et cetera, et cetera. We come to find out that these, these are black people running these schools and running this facility. Now, this didn't look like a public school, but the classroom was rather small. So I'm going to conclude that it was a private school. I could be wrong. I don't know. But once again, if this was a black person who authorized this decision, what does it say about you Negroes? What is it saying about y'all? That you have to run to the same group of people that you say are killing you, shooting you down, but yet the minute you have a disruptive student, you go ahead and you get these people to come deal with your situation? Now I say it's like this, anytime you can deal with a situation on your own, you do just that. The last thing you want to do is get the police involved because for the most part, cops are not coming to reason with you. You broke the law and this is how we're going to deal with you. Well, disrupting the classroom is not breaking the law, but they, they, they're not coming there to reason with you. They're not coming there to sympathize with you or to understand you. They're not coming there for that. And if you have black people who are authorizing these decisions, who have made this call, if that black teacher made that call, what does that say? But yet it's white people oppressing your black ass. But if it's black people who are authorizing this, what does it say about you? The next question I got to ask is, who is, or what policies are running that, that state? And I believe this in South Carolina. Is this the Democratic Party who is making these decisions to have police officers deal with situations that take place in these schools? Because we know all that took place in that school. Let me just keep it to what it is. Because if that's the case, you understand that black people vote for this party on a high scale in damn near every election. Because if this is the case and if what I'm saying is true, if it's black people that are running the school, if it's the Democratic Party that is running the state, and I could be wrong, I don't know, so don't hold me to it. But if it is, and what does it say? Because you Negroes are running around talking about no justice, no blaze. At the same time, who's sitting around authorizing these decisions? Who's voting these people in? Situations that don't change for you. But yet at the same time, every chance you get, you want to run around saying, man, I'm being oppressed. It's the ongoing legacy of slavery. White racism. But it's funny because you're running to the same group of people that you claim are oppressing you to come and fight your battles for you. And what that shows is that you're weak, you're incompetent, you can't handle and solve your own fucking problems. And it reminds me of, uh, there was a video I looked at a couple of months ago on YouTube. And it was about a, a black female who died I don't know if it was in the custody of police officers, whether she had some kind of an illness. I think she was handicapped or something. I don't remember. It was a while ago. But I guess she started having a spaz out in the household or whatever the case is. And since these Negroes couldn't calm her down or whatever, what did they do? They went ahead and they called the police. The same thing, these Negroes, the same group of people that these monkeys run around saying, oh, they're killing us and it's ongoing slavery. The same group of people these monkeys talk about are running to for, for protection to come deal with shit that these apes can't clean up themselves. And like I said before, when a police officer steps on the scene, now you're, any control you had over the situation is over. That's the way that works. When they step on the scene, it's simple. If I step on the scene and I got to clean this shit up for you, I'm doing it my way. And if you interfere 
with what I'm doing, I'm going to take your ass in there with me too. You're going down too. So this can go down hard and easy, your choice. But once I step on the scenes, guess what? Your authority is done for. See, if the Negro had any sense in his head, he would understand this and he would think long and hard before he'd get on the phone and call the goddamn police. They don't think like that. This is why this damn teacher, and I'm almost certain that he was the one that made this call to the police, can sit back and say, hey, you know, this girl won't put her phone or give me the phone, so I need you to come in here and get out of the classroom. Once again, showing the incompetence of you Negroes, just like you Negroes who are sitting back supporting the mayor of Baltimore. I can't remember her damn name off the top of my head. But this is the same female who once everything got out of control, now mind you, she allowed this shit to get out of control off of her own admission. I gave them a place to loot and burn. This is what the fuck she said. From what I understand, or rumor has it, that she won't be running again for mayor. Is that by coincidence? But now once everything falls apart, She's the same one calling in the National Guards and you monkeys sit back and y'all applaud her for that. Because y'all are that fucking stupid. That's not a good sign of y'all. What it shows is that you Negroes are incompetent. It shows you Negroes don't know how to clean up your own damn shit. It shows that you Negroes run to the same group of people that you are saying, no justice, no glaze. I can't glaze. Uh, hands up, don't shine. The same group of people that y'all are saying are gunning your stupid black asses down, y'all are running to for refuge because you don't know how to clean up your own shit. And once again, what this shows is that you're incompetent, you can't solve nothing, you're like an overgrown fucking child and you need someone else to come in and pat you on your ass because you're that damn dumb and stupid. But then when the shit goes out of control and goes completely south, oh man, it's all going racism and slavery. But yet your stupid black ass had no problem calling these motherfuckers before it happened. Don't know what else I really can say, but I just want to leave y'all with that thought. Who's making these policies? Who authorized this decision to have police officers dealing with disruptive students in the classroom? Because the time that I've went to high school, I've never seen that shit. Like I said, there were counselors that dealt with that. So who's making these decisions? I mean, it was a black man who was running the classroom who felt she was disruptive. Instead of saying, you know what, let me go get a counselor, felt the need to go and get a police officer. Don't really know what else I can say about you Negroes, but if what I'm saying in this scenario is true, this once again shows your level of incompetence. Because like I always say, I can lead you Negroes to the shine, but I can't make it glaze. Hands up.